Hey guys, welcome to the video today where I'm going to be sharing with you the best settings for your Canon EOS R6 and how to set your video up correctly. Let's jump in and get started. So it's no secret that about three months ago I ordered the R6 and it was delayed like a lot of you experienced and uh, I hope that you've actually received your R6s or R5s yet and in fact let me know in the comments below how you're getting on. Are you still waiting for your camera to arrive or has it arrived? Now I got mine three weeks ago and I'm over the moon with this camera so I wanted to share with you today how to set the camera up to get the best video settings for filmmaking. Now this is gonna be a step-by-step -step guide, so you can start at the start and then end at the finish and it's gonna take you through the process. But if you're someone that doesn't like watching, say, longer videos, then you can also skip to the part of the video that you wanna watch. And I've made that possible by adding timestamps in. You can click on them and then go to the part you want. Now, just before we jump into the video, if you do not use LUTs for your video, you should use them. It's essentially color grading with a click and this makes your footage look really cinematic. Now I've got some of these on my website and the vintage look pack is completely free. So you can jump on there and download it and use that to your heart's content. Now there is nothing that I want in return. So this is just me saying, use them, have fun with them and then make your video look better. Now I'll put a link in the description to that so you can check it out there. Okay guys, Let's jump into the video and get into the good stuff. In the Canon R6, you need to get familiar with the frame rates or movie recording quality sizes. Now, these can be found in the menu option and then just click inside to see what options that you have available. Now, the great thing about this camera is you can shoot in both full HD mode 1080p and you can then notch up the resolution and then go ahead and shoot in 4k mode. This camera has both resolution sizes and if you want to get the better quality you choose 4k. Shooting at 24 frames per second is going to give you a cinematic and natural feel to your video footage but if you want to say shoot some slow motion footage then you have to shoot in something like 60 frames per second. This is gonna give you some beautiful slow motion clips and is used a lot in things like films and documentaries. You also have 60 frames per second in full HD mode. And if you're looking for smaller, more manageable file sizes, then choose this instead of 4K. Another thing you can do is change your movie recording quality to high frame rate. This gives you the option of 120 frames per second in full HD mode. Click enable, and this is gonna mean that you can shoot the slowest footage and get the real nice cinematic slow motion that people desire in filmmaking these days. Now, one thing to really look out for is to ensure that if your camera is showing different frame rates to what I've just shown here, like 50 frames per second and 25 frames per second, then there's just one quick thing you can do to fix this. Ensure that you click into the menu system on your camera. And when you've done that, go to the yellow tab at the top, click in video system and then choose NTSC job done. This means that you will now have 24 frames per second, 60 frames per second, and also that high frame rate option inside the menu system. There are a number of different autofocus options inside the Canon R6. Just click here and then choose your autofocus option right there. Now at the bottom, the first option is for face and eye tracking. Now this is perfect when you're shooting people or subjects in the frame because this is gonna lock on and keep great autofocus on people when you're filming them. Now the next options are all quite similar and they range up from small to large. So the first one is a spot autofocus. Now as you can see with this small area, it's gonna be really perfect for focusing on small things inside your subject area. 
you can then just click on the area and then the camera is going to find focus inside this small box. Now the next few options just go up in size. They are the same kind of thing but just get bigger and bigger giving you a larger focusing area. Let's just check out the square here. You can see this is going to be a lot better for bigger things in your frame if you need to actually follow them or you need to just focus on a larger area. This is going to do a lot better job of that. Finally, the last two focus areas are a horizontal and a vertical focus area. Now this is a large autofocus space, which means that you can find any focus on anything inside this larger box. You can also switch over to the next mode, which is a horizontal one instead. Now you do have further autofocus options inside your autofocus menu. Now a couple of important ones to just bring to your attention are subject to detect. If you're shooting in eye autofocus mode or face tracking, you can choose between people or animals depending on who you're shooting or click no priority. I find this is a good in between option which picks up the right one, whichever you're shooting at the time. Finally, choose touch and drag autofocus settings and click enable if you want to choose to focus on the area yourself. Now this is instead of letting the camera choose the autofocus area, which can be important because sometimes it finds the wrong area. So you can override this and choose it yourself. An important thing to do is make sure that whatever frame rate you're using inside your camera, say if it's 24 frames per second here, you want to ensure that your shutter speed here is double that. So you can see it's 1 over 50, which is pretty much double 24 frames per second. Now, of course, if you were going to be doing the same and this time shooting in 60 frames per second, then you'd have to double that so it's 120 or 125 frames per second round about there. So this is something important that you need to make sure you follow this rule when shooting video. Another thing you want to do is try and keep your ISO as low as possible. This is so you keep nice clean footage when you're filming. And also if you're shooting some subject and you want to keep them separate from the background, just keep your aperture as low as possible as well. And that will give you nice background blur. Now the Canon R6 has Canon Log, which is brilliant because you can shoot in a nice flat profile here, which gives you more details to work with if you're color grading your footage or if you're putting a LUT on it and then giving it that nice cinematic color. Just ensure this is clicked on and then you'll be shooting in Canon Log. Also, you can change the color matrix if you want to. I keep it on neutral instead of Cinema EOS Original because I think it looks a bit better. And also another thing I do is I ensure that my color space is BT709. Now, finally, if you want to change the characteristics of your log profile, you can do, but I just keep it on zero for saturation and U, and I just have a one sharpness in strength. And that's lovely and flat with just a tiny bit of sharpness added in. Now, if you don't want to shoot Canon log, switch it off. And this means that you can just set your video camera up with a picture profile instead. If you're not interested in grading your footage or getting that real strong cinematic look, you can just go into picture profiles here and then apply a profile for the kind of filmmaking you're doing. So if I wanted to say shoot people, I've got a portrait mode here, which is going to give some nice natural portrait look to my film. Also, I've got landscape mode, which is going to bring out nice vivid colors in my landscape. And this is if you just want to set your camera up and go nice and quick and nice and easy. You can choose one of these profiles and you won't need to do any color grading or any kind of editing afterwards. You've got plenty of options here. You've even got monochrome, which is like a black and white setting, or you can choose your own definition here or your own settings by choosing one of the custom settings 
and you can just change your U, you can change your saturation and strength of sharpening here. One setting you'll have to set up is your white balance. This is to ensure that the white balance in your scene is correct. Now you can choose your white balance setting here and at the moment it's on automatic white balance. A lot of times I actually keep it on this setting because modern cameras do such a good job with getting the white balance correct. But you do have other options that you can choose from. You can see that you've got daylight mode. So if you're out in daylight, this is gonna do a really good job of keeping the color right for that. You can see how the color actually changes on each one that I choose. This is good for shade. This is a good cloudy setting, tungsten, and then obviously you can just choose different settings here. Now, if you wanna have the most control over this, you can choose the Kelvin or the temperature of the color yourself. And you can just drag this around to match whatever your scene is that you're shooting. But honestly, guys, most times you can choose automatic white balance and it does a great job and you won't need to change this most of the time. One of the brilliant features on this camera is that it has in-body image stabilization. You've just got to make sure that this mode is switched on here. And then this means that your camera and your lens, if it's got it built in, will be able to work together to keep your footage nice and stabilized. You can go enhance with this if you want, but just know that you might get a little bit of wobble in the corner of your video frame because your camera is basically doing as much as it can to keep your footage stabilized. Now, if you're recording audio inside the Canon R6, then go ahead to the sound recording option. And my advice here would be to change it to manual. This is so you can record manually your own audio with an external mic. Don't use the mic inside the camera because it's not designed for professional audio. Also, ensure that you bring your recording level all the way down to the bottom. And when you've done that, and dragged it all the way down to the bottom, just knock it up a couple of notches so that you get the best quality audio. Just be sure to turn the volume up when you're actually editing your audio in your editing software. That's how you set your R6 up for video. Now, there might have been quite a bit of information in here for you to digest, and if that's the case, you can always put this on watch later, and then you can check this video out to refresh your memory at another time. But the main thing is, I just hope you found something helpful from this video or valuable, and it's gonna help you out when using your camera. Because after all, that's why I do make these videos. Anyway, guys, I wanna hope that you have the very best day today, whatever you do, and I'll see you in the next video.